And it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is consult. Let's take a moment to look at some of the definitions or the ways that we use this verb. The first way you might hear consult used is to mean to seek information or advice with, from someone with an expertise in some area. With this first definition, um, I, I, my mind goes to the medical field. Um, and maybe you've seen different advertisements for medications or pharmaceuticals. Um, and sometimes they will say, kind of, consult your doctor or consult your physician. Sometimes as you go and, and pick up medications at a pharmacy, they might ask, would you like to consult the pharmacist? Do you want to get advice about how to best take this medication? Now, this verb is not uh, only limited to things related to our health, um, but I thought those might be some good examples about seeking information and advice. Now, a second way the verb consult gets used is to mean to have discussions with someone before you decide what action to take. So this might be whether to do something or not to do something or when to do a particular action. But again, the idea is there's conversation going uh, kind of back and forth. Maybe you're thinking about what good things could happen, maybe what are some of the negatives, and, and weighing those things before making a decision. A third way the verb consult gets used is to mean to refer for information in a book, article, or other type of document in order to make sure something is true. Okay? So here, this is almost like verifying, right? Uh, checking on. Uh, again, I like that. I, I like the part of our definition, making sure something is accurate or true. Um, so we're we're going to another source to make sure it is correct. You should know that consult is a regular verb. To make the progressive form of this verb, all I need to do is add ing to form consulting. The past tense and participle forms of this verb can be made by adding ed. Now the base verb consult t -t ends in a t sound. This means that the past tense ending is going to make an id sound. And we're going to add an extra syllable to the word when we say it. So the past tense and the participle forms of the verb should sound like this. Consulted. Consulted. Okay. Now, there are a couple phrasal verbs you might see with this particular verb. Um, you might see consult about or consult with. Uh, and again, this goes back to that idea of discussing something with someone. So these two phrasal verbs really have the same meaning. Let's look at the example sentences here. Can I consult the pharmacist about this medication? Right There's that earlier example where my mind went. So here, uh, someone who's a customer right, is asking to talk or discuss. Maybe there are some questions about side effects or how to take it, uh, foods to avoid with this particular medicine. Who knows? But this person is saying, I want to talk to an expert here. The second example I have is, I'll consult with our manager before we make any changes. Right? So we're saying, I'm going to discuss with, the, uh, discuss with the manager before anything different happens. Now let's move on and use our verb of the day, consult, in a couple different tenses. Today we're going to practice the imperative and the present perfect. Let's start with the imperative. Uh, many times, uh, students study this as commands, and if that's an easier word for you to remember, that's just fine. But with a command or the imperative, we're telling one person or multiple people, uh, depending on whom we're speaking to, to do or not do a particular action. And the imperative is rather unique because we do not begin our sentences with a subject, a stated subject. The subject is implied. It's you, whomever I'm speaking to or whomever I'm writing to. 
So in the imperative, in the uh, and in the affirmative, I can just begin my sentence with the base verb. You can see that in the example here. Consult reputable websites and journals for recent data to use in your research papers. Okay? This might be a command a teacher is giving their students. Okay, so they're saying look for right. Go to go to. Uh, websites and journals that you can trust for uh, current information. Okay, so they're telling someone to seek out this this information. Now, sometimes students will say, "Ooh, that seems seems rude just to tell someone to do a particular action. So you could add please at the beginning of a sentence or put the word please at the end of the sentence if you want to make it sound uh, perhaps a, a bit more polite. Okay. Now, if you want to make a negative imperative sentence, you're going to use do not and then the base verb. Okay. Um, you might also hear the contraction don't and then the base verb. And again, the same rule of using either please in the beginning or please at the end works if, if you want to make things seem uh, maybe a little less forceful. So an example of a negative impar imperative with consult would be don't consult with popular magazines for health advice. So um, I know I've heard certain health professionals say they get very frustrated when more kind of trendy and popular um, uh, pieces of uh, media, I should say, or really popular trendy media sources say like, this is going to help you achieve um, what is thought of as, as better health or a better appearance. And could actually sometimes be really dangerous things. So um, this might be a piece of advice from a medical professional. Now let's move on and talk about the present perfect. We use this verb tense in a couple different ways. Sometimes we use it to describe an action that occurred at some unknown point in the past. But we can also use it to describe an action that started in the past and is continuing into the present. Now, to make present perfect sentences, we must pay attention to our subject. If the subject is I, you, we, or they, we're going to use have and then the participle form the verb. But if the subject is he, she, or it, we're going to use has and then the participle form of the verb. Let's take a look at the affirmative or positive example here. President Biden has consulted with Finland's president throughout Russia's war against Ukraine. Right? So here this likely has that meaning of uh, discussions, right? This kind of ongoing talks. Okay. This would likely be an action that started in the past, is still continuing into the present because uh, the war is still ongoing. Now let's talk about making negative present perfect sentences. To do this, Again, I'm going to start with a subject, and if that subject is I, you, we, or they, we're going to use have, not, and then the participle form. But if the subject is he, she, or it, we'll use has, not, and then the participle form. Here's another example. We haven't consulted with a doctor about our child's stomach pains, right? So we haven't gone to an expert, maybe yet. Um, and finally, let's look at making a yes or no question in the present perfect. To do this, we can start with have or has, whichever form matches our subject, and that comes next. Then you're going to see the participle form of the verb. Here's the last example. Have you consulted with farmers about the new agricultural regulations? Okay. I saw many examples uh, similar to this where certain politicians had been asked, like, have you talked to experts in the field um, in, in which you're making laws about, right? Uh, have you sought their, their great wisdom and knowledge from this particular work? So um, I think that's uh, what this type of question is, is getting at, right? Did you just make something up or have you really thought this through with the help of an expert. Now let's spend a moment looking at some words that are related to our verb consult.
And the first word we're going to look at is just the noun form of this word, consult. This is the act of consulting a professional or an expert. An example of this might be, the doctor does a free 15 minute consult with new patients. Okay. So um, I'm realizing I, I left the word minutes out there, but hopefully you can understand it. So free 15 minutes uh, where maybe you talk, maybe there's a brief examination and some discussions about how treatment would be given. Another related word you might see is the noun consultation. Again, uh, this could have a couple meanings. It could be some meeting with an expert or with some type of professional. An example of this, you'll have a consultation with a surgeon before the surgery is even scheduled. Right? So there's going to be some meeting. Um, we're, we're not going to have a patient and doctor meet for the first time in the operating room. A second way this noun gets used is to refer to the action or the process of formally consulting or discussing something. An example of this might be, the city council will have a consultation on the possibility of closing one of the elementary schools. That's that idea of there are going to be usually many discussions. This won't be limited probably to just a, a single meeting. One last word for us to discuss today, it's the noun consultant. This is going to be a person who provides expert advice and does so in a professional capacity. So they're being paid for it. An example of this might be, she's worked as a business consultant for 15 years. So this might mean other companies hire her uh, to, to share information, ideas, her wisdom on how to work through certain challenges or problems. Might be something like, how do we grow the business? How do we attract new customers? Uh, could, could be uh, in a, a number of different areas. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a great day.